to represent our people. And as I stand here to support the bill by my good friend, Senator <clears throat> Moses Otiano Kajwang, I, I want to remind Kenyans that in every training that we carry, in every profession, if it is a hotel, you will require technical support. If any profession, even in fact, I dare say, the number of doctors who are employed or the demand for doctors is not equal to the demand of plumbers. It is not equal to the demand of uh, carpenters. It is not equal to the demand of electricians. Mr. Speaker, this bill speaks to the heart of creating employment in this country. Mr. Speaker, the reason why I support this bill is basically because of what is happening in our country. If you look at the informal sector, which contributes immensely to the economy of this country, and you ask yourself whether really doctors, lawyers are the ones who pay the most in taxes, or it is these people who are not recognized. Mr. Speaker, I support the bill and I hope that the draft of this bill, the distinguished senator from Homer Bay, can consider adding, maybe bringing an amendment to ensure that the last statement that he made of recognizing prior learning experience is actually entrenched into the bill so that those people who are born as artisans can actually be given certificates and they can be recognized and will be given an opportunity to train other Kenyans to allow them to be able to get jobs. Mr. Speaker, sir, sometimes when you look for a plumber, you don't get one. Mr. Speaker, sir, sometimes when you look for an electrician, you don't get one. So this bill actually helps a lot. It helps, and, and I like the fact that in the fourth schedule, maybe that's the only part that I will differ a little bit with my colleague, uh, if I had him correctly, in terms of the amendment of the Constitution. The only thing that we should do if, it, if we are to amend is to ensure that we send more money to support these vocational training uh, centers. County governments should take their role. I like the fact that he wants the county governments to be able to support this vocational training. The only part which I think we are over-regulating is if we now also require that we regulate on driving schools, we regulate on barber shops, we regulate on beauty parlors. Mr. Speaker, in this country, if, so long as we've already regulated the training, let allow, allow people to go and make their money. The problem we have in this country, Mr. Speaker, is that we are in love with taxation. We overtax people. Recently, Mr. Speaker, sir, I got a call from uh, Kebs telling me that, oh, in your manufacturing of milk, we now want you to start paying another, be, another, uh, another levy in terms of taxes. You know, we are trying to kill the manufacturing sector in this country. So when you now require that even a hairdresser is regulated by the county government, that the county government will begin taxing that hairdresser, a driving school being taxed, as if we are not taxed enough. You're already paying the VAT. The only way, in fact, I always believe that the only way we can actually be able to lower the cost of living in this country is first of all by eliminating unnecessary taxation of our people. We overtax our people. And, and I feel bad that we are overtaxing our people so that we can please the West, we can please IMF and all the other Bretton Wood institutes that we can be able to pay the loans that they give us. So what, what we should do now is to only regulate. I like the fact that the bill attempts to regulate this, set up standardized exams all across the country so that any mushrooming vocational trainings that can be able to come, they can actually exist with, you know, following a particular statutory. So, Mr. Speaker, in conclusion, I'd like to request Senator Kajuang to really think about adding that aspect of ensuring that we recognize prior learning 